one more dynamic duo, one more presentation to go before this year's Lakeland Finland Destina Sustainable Destination Congress is coming to an end. But before that, we'll uh, welcome on stage uh, Sara Kentilini, who is the project manager of GeoFood, and Bol Tom Choe, who is the CEO and director of Magma UG Geoparks. Um, you'll be joining us from Norway, as we can see from the flag. How are you guys? <laughs> They're fine, thank you. <laughs> I'm very good, thank you. It's a beautiful day in the, in the city of Lahti, the European Green Capital. Um, can you describe us where you are and what you see through the window? What kind of landscape is there? Uh, we are in the middle of a small city, so it's uh, and we are situated in an old diary. So, but it's uh, it's melting now. Actually, we have been three weeks with uh, minus uh, rather minus seven, minus nine, minus eight. No, it's melting, so the, maybe the spring is coming. <laughs> well, hopefully not yet. Um, we've been lucky to have um, proper minus degree temperatures here for the past few days, and now it's around minus 10, and our green capital of Europe is actually quite wide at the moment. We've got beautiful wintry landscape outside, which I'm sure loads of us will be enjoying tonight as well. Uh, guys, it's great to have you with us. Um, we're looking forward to your presentation, so uh, without further ado, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, then we first of all we had to say congratulations and to the Lati to become a European Green Capital of 2021. That's an achievement. Thank you. Okay, I will just say change every time we change. Uh, so now we change. Yes, good. Yeah, we don't need to stay on this one. Next one, please. Uh, yes, the, the European, uh, the UNESCO Global Geoparks go way far way back actually. It started already in 1972 with the International Geoscience Program uh, at UNESCO. Uh, and uh, the, the Global Geopark Network was established in 2004. These two networks merged together in November 2015, creating the International Geoscience and Geopark Program. Yes, and today there are 161 UNESCO Global Geoparks world in four uh, and in uh, and uh, well, 81 of them is in the European uh, countries. As you can see at uh, the map there uh, up that you have the for the last year, they had was 20 now 81 geoparks. And uh, you can see on the map downstairs that there are two hotspots in a way that uh, concentrations of geopark, and that's in Europe, where the whole thing started in 2000, and uh, in uh, Asia, where the, the global geopark network was established in 2004. Change, please. Uh, we have a lot of activities in the Nordic countries and when it comes to net global geoparks. We have several. Uh, projects, uh, but in, and in Norway we have we, that, uh, we are the Nordic country with most UNESCO Global Geoparks. We have three approved, and we have two projects going on. But all the Nordic countries has several projects going on, so it's uh, very exciting to see new projects popping up. Even Sweden is now working on it, so they will probably be also have a UNESCO Global Geopark for so long. Thank you. Next. The UNESCO Global Geoparks, we work on several focus areas. We have 10 uh, main focus areas. We work uh, about sustainable use of natural resources. And we work on geological hazard uh, awareness, the climate change and green tourism. We educate about uh, our geological heritage and all the thematic. That's very important to us. Work with universities and science work with the local stakeholder and cultural heritage. Women inclusion is important, sustainable development, of course, and indigenous people and geo conservation. Change, please. All these 10 focus areas uh, we use to ma make as sustainable as possible and meet some of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This is agenda uh, that is a plan of actions for people people, planet, prosperity, 
and seek to strengthen the universal peace. As you're all aware, there's 17 sustainable development goals, but not everybody's aware that there's 169 targets. So it's a big package to, to work with. The geoparks, the UNESCO Global Geoparks, we, we work um, against, we have chosen some targets, uh, some of the, the development goals that's important for us and it's as some we, and we, as we can work with. Uh, we have we chosen eight, so change please. Uh, so the International Geoscience at Europa program works with eight goals. Uh, the first is the end of poverty, important. Uh, equal education, we work with education every day. Uh, achieve a gender equality. Uh, next. We will want to make the citizens and uh, human set set settlements so resilient and sustainable as possible. Uh, we work uh, also with uh, economic growth. And uh, the last three. We ensure uh, the sustainable consumption and production patterns. We work with the climate uh, actions. And uh, very important for the network, that's a worldwide network, to work with the stakeholders locally, but also work with the international networks. So the international network of the geoparks, global geoparks, we may meet every second year, all the global geoparks, and uh, in each uh, the regional uh, networks, like the European geopark network, we meet every, twice, twice a year. Next. Then we will uh, see a little bit about the Magma Geopark as a company. Yeah. Uh, Magma Geopark wants to be an innovative company that will organize, disseminate, develop and things in the region based on our unique geology, geological, natural and cultural heritage. Next. We want to do this in a sustainable way as possible. Uh, and uh, also this uh, Last year, in the middle of the pandemic, we managed to get an environmental certificate that's measuring uh, the, our goals. And uh, so we, every year can be imp improve and be better. I actually have how it look like the signboard. Next, please. The company is a mixed public uh, private company. It's a share company, but it's also a non profit company, so it's a little special. But the main uh, stakeholders are, are public and it's the municipality and the counties. So, counties is the biggest. Next. Uh, Magma Geopark is an average uh, European geopark in size and in turnover. We have a turnover of about 400,000 euro in 2020. We are five employees. Uh, our income is from, um, from the owners. We also get uh, to the governmental budget uh, last year. So now then this also continue, continue this year. So we get support from the government, uh, central government. Uh, the biggest uh, achievement uh, maybe is the projects. So that is also our main income, and we are working on to be more commercial and, and to get have new products, so we can have several legs to stand on. It's important for the sustainability also of the economy of the company. Next, a little bit about the UNESCO Global Geopark. What it means to be a UNESCO Global Geopark, and the goal for this is to work with sustainable tourism. Uh, but also to make them get more tourists to come uh, to your area. And we have actually been, uh, it's been a growth since we started to measure in 2013. So we have uh, every year um, a growth uh, in the people visiting us. And actually I got the new numbers from uh, 2020. And even in 2020, last year in the middle of the pandemic, we had 8% growth in the the people uh, visiting our hotels for holiday and leisure. So that's rather special. But it's going to be interesting to see more figures coming for last year. Next. 
Uh, yes, holiday and leisure is growing and it has been growing for 2.5 million euros since we started in 2013. Next. So the tourists leave behind in the five minutes. We have five minutes to go municipalities. Uh, totally hotel accommodation is worth about 7.2 million euros. And the total number of overnight stay is about 80 million euros. So it's a lot of people working in a tourist uh, uh, tourist uh, economy Sector. in the, the geopark. Next. So then the background of the geopark. Uh, since I'm the geologist, I can use a lot of time on this, but I try to be brief. Uh, to be a UNESCO Global Geopark, you need to have geology classified as international importance. Uh, Magma Geopark is called Magma because all the rocks in Magma Geopark is one billion years old and is magmatic origin. Uh, we have three, in a way, provinces, geological provinces. Uh, but next, but they are all uh, from pre-Cambrian, around one billion years old. So the, the rocks in magma uh, was melt, was crystallized under a big mountain chain, about 20 kilometers under the surface for one billion years ago. And stayed underneath this mountain chain for one billion years. The dinosaur will run up here, everything happened up here, but we were staying in the, inside the mountain chain. This mountain chain has eroded away physically and uh, chemically and, and created Denmark, Northern Germany, this with a uh, big gravel coming from our area. But then just a few years ago, we pop up in a way, in, in, uh, after this we have several ice ages with a couple of kilometer ice scratching over us and then we come up and we have a lot of the features uh, also here for, uh, that is uh, made in uh, quaternary. So we have these old uh, rocks and quaternary more or less in Magma Geopark. Next. I talked about these three provinces. The province that is uh, closest to the to the ocean and along the coast is a rock uh, or a province or a rock called Anorthosite. And you find this in Magma Geopark and you find it on the moon. So all the light areas on the moon is uh, a north side. So when you're out with your fiancé uh, in the evening, you can look up at the moon on the light areas and think about a north side and Magma Geopark. It's a good advertising, I think. Next. The one guy that was here, I don't know if you bring your fiancé or not, but he studied in the 60s, uh, the rocks in Norway, and he was also here in Marmar Geopark, studying the rocks here that he knew was the same type of rocks as on the moon. So Harrison Smith, he was uh, here, and uh, he was also with Apollo 17 as the first geologist traveling to the moon, and he bring home something like 100 kilo of rock samples. Geologists always bring rock samples, even if they're on the moon. Next. Then we have the province number two, uh, that is the biggest layer, layered intrusion in uh, Western Europe. Uh, it's, it's, it's huge. Uh, it's a seven kilometer stack, a stack of uh, magmatic rocks is layered. And inside this uh, layering, there are also a world largest deposit of nickel and vanadium. So it's uh, so, a lot of things going on around that too. So it's uh, very interesting. Here we have a class from Belgium that is here every year. We have students coming from Belgium to look at the layering. Change, please. And the last province is the, the Gneisic Rock up north, northeast, uh, that is up to one and a half billion years old. This is a picture from our biggest screen in Northern Europe, Gropdalsura, some years ago. Next. Okay, a little bit about marketing and communication. Magma Geopark has put on around 50 signboards uh, with, uh, that mounted on boulders made of an uh, that welcome you. And uh, beside this welcome uh, signboard, there normally also a signboard that uh, describes this location you are. And, and also with that one, a leaflet often. Next, please. We worked a lot with our homepage to reach out to our public, and we got a lot of positive feedback on our homepage. Next. Uh, we have some offers. You can rent a bike, you can rent climbing equipment, you can bring a, you can rent a guide. 
uh, visiting the special topics of the, the deer park. Next. And you see we have uh, here some examples of leaflets that we make. Some is for hiking, strolling, uh, some is also for biking. So you can rent a bike uh, and bring with you a leaflet and uh, find a way. You can also use an app that we have to create so that I can show you the way and you can and pop up uh, and it's a guide that you can go from place to place and learn more about the geology or the culture or nature on, the, on your way. Next. We're also rather active on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, especially. So we have we are having a growth of our followers uh, every day. Next. We also use some uh, money to, to uh, work on our announcements on, on our local newspapers. And additionally, we also have a newsletter going out to about 600 stakeholders uh, every every second month. Next. And this is, of course, what we prefer to do is to get out of the office, out in the nice weather that we always have here, of course, Southwest Norway, uh, with, our, with kids, teach them about uh, the geology and the nature. And also bring them in, of course, we have an exhibition that they can use and get questions and learn more about this, the story of Earth. Next. Additionally, we have no one uh, visit um, mine in each of the five municipalities that is in Magma Geopark. Uh, this is abandoned mines uh, that we can use for teaching and we can use for searching for minerals, and learn about minerals, take pictures, and then get the kids uh, explore. Next. Yeah, here you see some, some happy kids. They're normally happy. <laughs> This is uh, one of our main mines, it's a Blåfjell mine that we, we find ilmenite. Okay, then I will leave the floor to uh, Sara and she will talk about some of the projects that we are doing. Thank you. Hey, nice to meet you. My name is Sara. I am project manager in Magma UNESCO Global Geopark in Norway, as Paul said. I'm responsible for uh, attracting new investors, investments, looking for project opportunity and supporting the projects that are going on right now. At the moment, we have a huge list of active projects. Uh, we have we have a couple of Horizon 2020, which are the result. Uh, you, so you can change the slide, please. Yes. Yes, thank you. We have a couple of Horizon 2020, which is uh, the main uh, program from European Union concerning the research. We've been involved as partners. We have a project uh, that uh, involves the Environmental Directorate. We are working on art. We are working with the tourism strategy for the overall area that which take in account, of course, the sustainability. We are working on uh, uh, developing new locations and uh, strategy product development. Change, please. As I mentioned before, one of our Horizon 2020 project is Ruritage, is led by the University of Bologna, where I am from. Uh, it's a four years Horizon project that uh, established a model for regeneration of rural areas and rural communities uh, based on the cultural and natural heritage. Uh, the project has 38 partners from 18 countries and is working on six innovative areas, each of which should be a model for creating economic growth. Uh, in the project uh, has been involved five UNESCO global geoparks and the UNESCO Earth Science Department uh, of, of UNESCO. The project has 13 role models which bring best practices and uh, uh, six in six replicator areas which are have the main uh, uh, goal of replicating the best practices bring by the role models. You can find more information on the web page. Next please. Uh, specifically within Ruritage, Magma Geopark has set up four main actions. Uh, I'm not going into, into details. The, the, the important things in this uh, contest is to say that we are we like to join actions to strengthen the local identity and we want to promote the tourist offer uh, along five municipalities through the design of a tourist route, which will mainly focus on uh, uh, implementing the cooperation with local stakeholders and it will have special special uh, uh, digression related with local foods. Next, please. This is a kind of preliminary itinerary for the food trade that it will uh, 
across uh, Magnusco Global Geopark. We are working very much uh, with uh, with local food and local local producer. Next, please. Uh, within Ruritage, we managed to increase the cooperation with local farmers, uh, local restaurants, and uh, the overall idea is to develop a coastal route that uh, will um, valorize our uh, uniqueness uh, and the, the unique geological and cultural heritage, including the uniqueness of our local product. Next, please. And the next project I'd like to introduce you briefly about is uh, Arctic Hubs. Um, the lead of Arctic Hub is a Finnish uh, institution, it is Luke. Uh, it's, it's a four year Horizon 2020 project that will establish a model for regeneration of rural community. Uh, the project has 22 partners from 10 countries, has been working on 33 hubs and seven learning cases. The main idea of the project is to uh, identify, analyze, and uh, implement. Uh, strategies uh, against uh, the pressures uh, due to um, global drivers and uh, reduced economic economic impact affecting these 33 key hubs. Basically, we will work on fish farming, forest, tourism, mining, and indigenous culture. Change, please. The project has set up a, a quite a innovative approach, uh, starting from. Uh, global drivers uh, going through local impacts, creating a kind of uh, local uh, strategy that is going to be implemented in Magma Geopark as well. Change, please. Specifically, Magma, we will work in, uh, in a fish hub, uh, in mining hub and in tourism. Regarding the fish hub, the Gersud Harbor is one of the biggest fishing harbor in Norway. And uh, there has four salmon rivers and several fish farms which are involved in the project. And our goal is to turn to turn them into uh, a more sustainable production. For the mining hub, the, as as Paul said, uh, uh, the area is rather uh, important for the mine extraction, and the mine extraction characterized the history of this area since a long time ago. Uh, basically, uh, Magma Geoprac will work uh, on uh, um, su supply the new uh, coming. Uh, uh, extraction with innovative strategies in, in the, try to make it as more sustainable as possible, of course, with the help of uh, international experts and partners and universities that develop that strategy. Next, please. We are working also on tourism very much, so we will uh, support uh, uh, the already existing strategy uh, to make Magma a sustainable tourist destination. Since we are, make on, we, are, we are basically in the middle of untouched nature, we have 1,000 lakes, we have approximately 6,000 lakes, not as many lakes that you have, but we are doing our best. And we have a very uh, traditional cultural activities. Uh, we, are, we have to say that also thanks to the several projects that we've been running through the years, we have reached a good level of participation within, within local public and private stakeholders. We involve them more and more in our activities and uh, they feel more and more part of our um, environment, of our of our overall strategy. Uh, as Paul said, from 2013, the overnight stay increased of 90%. But which one, uh, change please, which are our outdoor activities? Well, actually, Magma promotes in general outdoor active and healthy lifestyle. Uh, we have uh, several climbing routes. Uh, we rent directly the climbing equipment. And for the other activity, we have agreement with local providers uh, that provide activity like co-steering, canoeing, kayaking, fishing or frisbee. Uh, change, please. Specifically, uh, Magma is a, is a perfect area for biking. Uh, we have developed five biking routes and we have developed information material linked to that that is available for tourism. Magma even rent electric bike and uh, the Gerzu municipality offer bike sharing from the train station. So we try to develop packages in cooperation with Region Stavanger that are focusing on sustainable transport, uh, the use of the train to get from the main airport that is located in Stavanger to our headquarters that is in Egerzud, and then a, a bike sharing that bring, can bring tourists in our locations. Uh, we have 46 locations which are not really easy reachable by, by, by walk, so bike could be a, a good solution. Next, please. Uh, since 2015, uh, I can say that together with uh, with Paul and other three partners from the Nordic country, we've been the inventor of the GeoFood brand. 
The GeoFood brand is working specifically on sustainability, linked with local food, connecting food with geological heritage. It's the unique brand that uh, is available for uh, uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks uh, territories only, and um, I will tell you more in detail. Change, please. Uh, the three main goals of GeoFood, uh, that is now a copyrighted brand in Europe, is to promote UNESCO Global Geoparks geodiversity, products, producers and restaurants. Uh, we like to boost the local food experiences as unique travel experiences uh, in the frame of sustainability, like uh, offer to the tourists some uh, uh, innovative experience that they can only have in, into UNESCO Global Geopark. We like to increase at the same time the citizen awareness about the geopark values, but also especially the environmental issues and the geodiversity. Change, please. Uh, the GeoFood Network uh, is cooperate supporting uh, local geopark producer farmers to preserve their tradition and to increase the local scale economy. In fact, one of the main goals of UNESCO Global Geopark is to boost local economy to work with uh, com local communities to increase sustainable development. We in fact support sustainability practices. Uh, GeoFood uh, is characterized by criteria that uh, promote the use of local raw material, enhancing the use of kilometer zero food. Uh, only a uh, producer or restaurant that following this uh, environmental criteria can get the label from the geopark. So uh, we think is a very good way to strengthen the uh, environmental uh, good habit in our territories. Together, we also looking for project opportunity to support the geoparks and the communities. Next, please. This, uh, this map is representing the network in December 2020. There were 16 territories around the world using the GeoFood brand. Just last week, we got a member more and uh, just before I send the presentation, so we got an agreement with uh, uh, Mungshan in uh, South Korea. So now we are 17 territories uh, around the world uh, within 11 different countries. We have been translating the criteria and our manifesto values into all the languages and we are working with uh, local communities crossing the world. Change please. Yeah, again, uh, GeoFood is about geology and food. Uh, GeoFood product must, must have strong connection with the local heritage. Uh, concerning the restaurant, 50% of the, of, the, of the menu should uh, be made of local product and seasonal. The storytelling become extremely important because we find out that uh, uh, what we what we give for granted, like that uh, children knows uh, where where their food coming from, actually is not really so obvious. So it's nice to tell the overall story from the farm to the fork of a, of a, a, a specific food. Uh, that's why we provide information in the food label or in the menus. And the origin of the raw material need also to be clearly described on the label. Uh, next, please. We have uh, several examples of uh, producers and uh, restaurants uh, around the world. You can see it on our page, geofood.no. They will be soon uh, uh, be changed into uh, um, a more uh, detailed one. You can find information about the Magma Geopark uh, local network of geofood producer in our page, or you can follow us on social media. Next, please. In, uh, at the end of 2020, there were 45 restaurants using and implementing the geofood brand and 49 producers around the world. Next, please. Uh, very briefly, uh, because the, the conference about sustainability, uh, we have developed a manifesto that need to be agreed by all the geopark and all the producers and restaurants that want to use the brand. We support sustainable development, uh, especially we uh, try to reduce as much as possible the use of pesticides. The, we, we like to underline the importance of the use of the water resources. Uh, we like uh, the, that uh, it to increase the growing of seasonal product. We like to enhance the use of kilometer zero food in the daily use of people, both in private and public sectors with agreement with the uh, canteen or school canteen or uh, elderly house. And together we are looking for new innovative project opportunities. 
Next, please. Of course, the Geo Food is, is actively contribu contributing to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, especially on the goals that are listed here, like uh, uh, ensure food security, uh, provide uh, good health that start with good nutrition, sustainable agriculture that has the potential to address water scarcity, food production, low and low income economies. Uh, and I like to underline that, uh, again, that the geo food is a brand that is born within the UNESCO Global Geo Per Values. And uh, uh, our aim is to involve all the 160 UNESCO Global Geo Parks around the globe to work uh, uh, specifically into this uh, uh, thematic link with agriculture and sustainability and geological heritage. The next, please. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you for inviting us to this uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, Congress. And uh, if you have any question, we are here for you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much, Sarah and Paul. That was really fascinating presentation. And if you've got any questions, please send them in. We still got a bit of time to have a bit of a chat with you guys. Um, actually, a couple of things came to my mind, but we've got one one question that has already come in. Um, somebody from Finland is asking, uh, uh, in Finland is in tourism and forest and parks, um, and yet we are keeping, uh, we're cutting them down. Uh, going to a park or walking or biking on a man-made trail is not nature. What will you do to conserve and protect nature? This person asks. So what's your kind of relationship to conserving these areas that you are inviting people to come and enjoy? So you, you, if you want to bring people out in nature, you need to make some trails. I, I, there are studies saying that if you have a trail, 98% of the people walking there, they're, they're walking on the trail. Anyway, so in this way, you preserve the nature around the trail, but you have to make some kind of infrastructure to get the people out in the nature. There are not, no other way. Absol absolutely. Um, so still in that area, you have areas that are, haven't been touched by man or haven't been, in a way, made trails yes. by man. Yes. Um, one thing I was thinking, like in the bigger picture, kind of like, because a lot of more and more children and people are living in cities, in urban areas, and a lot of children are being born in cities and they don't get to experience um, nature that much unless their parents are really kind of keen on taking them there. Um, have, have you taken this into consideration when, when you've been kind of commercializing and turning this geopark concept into a brand that you are really targeting people who are living in cities? Uh, not not really. Uh, most uh, kids in Norway grow up with the nature very close. So, but of course, we have uh, international tourists coming to us and we have actually made a program for Chinese kids so we haven't had the first uh, pro we haven't had the first uh, school class yet, but we have we are working on that. So that and that is a program in a way that they have to be careful taking the first script, uh, step step into the nature. We try to build it up for them so they get to, to know the nature. So, but that's that can be a, a big yeah. That's that's very interesting question and uh, I, I think it is, it's possible, but you need you need to be very patient with them, I think, to get them out in nature. Yeah, but I was thinking because you've got that really fascinating education, which were really interesting that you're actually, I would assume, helping young children and, 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 and adults alike kind of getting really dwelling into the nature and getting fascinated by the whole history and the, the natural history of the area. Mm. Okay. We are working very, very much also with the University of Stavanger, that is a quite a big town close to, is the, is the only, can say, big town close to the geopark. And uh, uh, tourists from the cruise can take the train and come to us. So that's also some, some target group that we are working on. And they can, of course, download the app, but they can also book a specialized guide. So actually, we are working with uh, different target groups, yes. Yeah, exactly. Like we are all uh, like today we've been talking about tourism and sustainable tourism and it's got a lot to do with internationalism and before c Corona struck us mm -hmm. and changed everything. But how do you see the future when you're thinking about the geoparks over there? Um, are you hoping to get your international um, travelers back there and experiencing your nature? Yes, I think they will come very quickly back. Uh, 
still. So there will be, uh, we have a growth, it seems like we have a growth even, even inside uh, 2020. So I'm rather sure that will come back, uh, the international travelers. Actually, I had uh, New Year's Eve, I had uh, two Chinese was climbing in our one of our Via Ferrata, so, so they find a way. I'm sure people will find their way there in the future. Uh, Sara and Paul, thank you very much. It was great to have you with us. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you. And we wish you all the best in the future. Have a great year, 2021. To you same, too. Same to you, same thank to you. you. Bye, Thanks bye. Thank you.